Let's take a look at the antiderivative of e to the 3x cosine 4x. For here, we want a method that gets us to our solution as fast as possible. So, if you come across this antiderivative in the real world or an exam situation, this is the way we want to go. Now, first, let's see our options. So, if you're learning this for the first time, this is fair game for an exam, probably going to want to memorize the formula. So, it's not that hard, but it does take some work. For your second option, okay, if you're going to do it by the book, it's going to be a double integration by parts. That's a real time waster. So, for a third method, what we're going to do is we'll partially memorize our answer, and then we'll use the definition of antiderivative. So, if we have the derivative of f is equal to g, it's the same as saying the antiderivative of g is equal to f plus a constant. So, the trick we're going to use is what we normally do when we check our work. So, we'll have an answer, take its derivative, and then that's going to be equal to your original function. Okay, so let's set things up. So, I'm going to have the antiderivative e to the 3x cosine 4x dx. What do I have to partially memorize? So, one thing to memorize is the antiderivative of this function is going to return the function itself. Okay, the only catch is, is that there's going to be a number out in front. Then the second part you have to memorize is that we're going to have an e to the 3x with a sine 4x. So we're always going to have a cosine with a sine. And again, there's going to be a constant out in front of this one too. Okay, and then you can throw in your constant of integration. So now I want to apply okay, our definition of antiderivative to these two sides. So the idea is going to be we're going to take the derivative of the big term. So that's going to be our f. Then our g is going to be e to the 3x cosine 4x. So we take the derivative of f, what do we get? Well, we're going to have, okay, we're going to have two product rules, and in those product rules, we'll have chain rules. Now, the chain rules aren't going to be bad just because we have scalars. So every time I take a derivative, I'm just pulling a number out. Now, take derivative of the first term. So first part, e to the 3x becomes 3e to the 3x, and then we pick up our cosine 4x. Then if I take derivative of cosine 4x, that becomes minus sine of 4x times 4. So that'll give us this term. Then for a product rule here, again we're going to do the e to the 3x, so it's going to become a 3e e to the 3x. Then derivative of sine 4x is going to give me cosine 4x and then times a 4. So we get that here. Then, we're just going to set that equal to g. So it's going to be equal to e to the 3x cosine 4x. So we'll have this is equal to this. Now we just match up like terms. So first we go and pick out all the coefficients for e to the 3x cosine 4x. So we'll have 3a, we'll have plus 4b, and that's going to be equal to a 1 on the other side pick off the coefficients for e to the 3x sine 4x. I'll have a minus 4a, I'll have a 3b, and then on the other side, we're gonna have a zero. So since there's no e to the 3x sine 4x, coefficient zero. So that gives me another equation. So now we have two equations, two unknowns, we can start solving. First step, we'll have a equals 3 fourths b. Substitute that back into our first equation. That's gonna give me B equals 4 over 25. Once we have that, we can substitute back into here. That gives me A equals 3 over 25. So that gives us our solution. We take our A and our B, put them back into our F. We found our solution by using our method that checks our answer. So let's just recheck our answer again. So we have our antiderivative, F. What we're going to do is we'll just take its derivative see that we get back e to the 3x cosine 4x. Now, this computation is going to be exactly like the computation we did on the previous board, except now instead of a and b, we have numbers. So if you work that out, what you're going to get is e to the 3x cosine 4x as promised. Now, final note. So some students are a little bit bothered by this business of just matching things on both sides of the equation. So what are we really doing here? So if you want something concrete that you had to explain to someone, what would you say? Well, all we're doing is finding certain values of x 
that makes our equations collapse to the equations that we want. So for instance, if I put a zero in here, what's gonna happen? Well, cosine of zero is one, sine of zero is zero, e to the three x at zero, it's just gonna be e to the zero, which is a one. So when I put zero in, our equation is just gonna collapse to three a plus zero plus zero plus four b, and then on the other side I get one. So if you know, that's just what I got when I matched the e to the three x cosine four x terms. Okay, zero is a good point for this. What would be another good point? Well, you could try pi halves, but what happens when you use pi halves? You're gonna multiply by four first, which is gonna give you two pi. Then you're just gonna get back your first equation. So you need to try something slightly different. So the idea is gonna be, I wanna put pi halves in to sine, but that pi halves has gotta go through four x first. So I think of it this way. I wanna put pi halves into sine of box, but box is gonna be equal to four x. So that's gonna be equal to pi halves, and then we see that x equal to pi over eight is gonna be the number we wanna use. Now, if I put pi eights in there, it's gonna become pi halves, cosine of pi halves is zero, sine of pi halves is one, and then our equations are gonna to collapse to minus four a plus three b equals zero, like we had before. And then we can go to our business of solving two equations and two unknowns.